Hi there, and welcome to another Culture Mavens. Unfortunately, Rabbi Nanis couldn't join us today, but she'll be back next week. In the interim, I'm going to share with you a couple of things that I've enjoyed this week. The first of which is the trial of the Chicago 7. It's based on true historical event that following the 1968 Democratic Convention protests, the U.S. government, once the Nixon administration got into power, decided to prosecute the leaders from the SDS, Students for Democratic Society, including Tom Hayden and Rennie Davis. This is written and directed by Aaron Sorkin. Uh, Aaron Sorkin writing a courtroom drama is really uh, playing to Aaron's strengths and really has such great resonance for today. The uh, real surprise of the movie is Sasha Baron Cohn, who plays Abby Hoffman and who steals the movie. Over the course of the years, um, I had occasion to hear uh, Rennie Davis and Dave Dellinger speak. Um, I was at events where Abby Hoffman and Jerry Rubin were, and I, I heard Tom Hayden speak. Hayden became a California state uh, legislator and, and Senate member. I think that Hayden was uh, both more personable and more professorial and more pointed in ways and less sort of establishment than Eddie Redman portrays him. And of course, Jerry Rubin was much more entertaining and more full of himself when he was on his performance in this film. Uh, Aaron Sorkin does a great job in uh, making this a compelling story um, and bringing them back to life. So that's the my first recommendation is the trial of the Chicago Seven. Then I also saw this 2011 film called Remembrance, based on a true story of a Jewish woman in a concentration camp who was able to had a romantic and sexual relationship with another inmate who was a Polish Catholic whose name was Tomas. He was able to escape from the camp with her into a world where they were both both still being chased and wanted people and could not live freely. Each was told the other was dead. And 30 years later, they find out the other is in fact alive. And the film goes between the past and uh, the present. It's not an American Hollywood movie. So the characters are more nuanced in some ways, and uh, the heroes are not entirely explained and nothing is tied up in a neat ending, but it's really interesting and certainly worth seeing, and I, I recommend that. My final recommendation for this week is a new documentary called Herb Alpert Is. It's a documentary about the life of Herb Alpert, whom many of you will recall from Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. It's directed by John Scheinfeld who did a great documentary about Harry Nilsson and also worked on a great documentary about John Lennon versus the United States and an excellent documentary on John Coltrane called uh, Chasing Train. Here we have the story of this Boyle Heights born uh, son of immigrant parents, uh, primarily from Romania, who became a musician and on a trip to Tijuana, went to a bullfight and came back to L.A. and recorded an instrumental called The Lonely Bull, which launched an amazingly successful career. And Herb was the founder with Jerry Moss of a and Records. And uh, the label ended up selling for some $700 million. And Herb has continued to be incredibly philanthropic, endowing uh, UCLA's music department and funding the Harlem School for the Arts. And and uh, he and Lanny Hall continue to perform. It's a quite uh, interesting documentary. The footage of Herb in his heyday is quite amazing. There's a specific tone to his trumpet playing that makes it so distinctive that uh, is filled with uh, a certain melancholy that I feel uh, draws you in and kind of hooks you. The film is filled with many celebrities answering the question Herb Alpert is, including Quincy Jones, and uh, Sting, and uh, and uh, we get to see footage of uh, her producing Sergio Mendez, which is lovely to see all of it. Look forward to uh, joining you next week with Rabbi Susan Nanis. And uh, until then, good viewings and uh, good Shabbos. Bye.